Hello, it is Decivart here, and I'm here with another tutorial. This tutorial is on model collisions in GameMaker 3D. Um, now, I know I've done this kind of before, but not as much in detail as I would have liked. I kind of just pointed to it a little bit, or just tried to use advanced functions in it. So, this should hopefully be a little bit more explanatory. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to make an entire engine for you. I'm just going to show you the functions that you can use to make your own collision uh, engine. So we're going to be using the DLL P3DC once again because I love it. And we're going to be using a much newer version than in past videos. This will be version 6, the latest version as of right now. It works with GameMaker 8.1 and I think past versions up to GameMaker 6. So 6, 7, 8, and 8.1 should all work with this. Actually, I've even tried it with HTML5, and that works as well. So let's, let's um, show you the folder we got here. So this is the download folder on the site that I'm going to link you guys to. So it comes with a whole bunch of examples. It comes up with actually seven examples. So you're going to want to actually look at these and see how he does it, because he's a genius. I would definitely recommend you uh, looking at all these and stuff, but since you guys seem to like video tutorials, I'm going to show you guys uh, the basic functions and attempt to explain them as best I can. So I've made a new game, I'm just stuck it in here as game. So the first thing you're going to need to do is not only save your game in a folder, but also copy over the DLL, p3dc.dll, and stick it in here. This is important, obviously it has to be right next to it so that the game can see it and use it. So that works. Now we also have the p3dc.gmres. This, uh, this is um, what you can use to import all the scripts from his examples into your game. You're definitely going to need that. So let's go into the game here and go File, Import Resources. So then we just find it. And there we go. So as we can see here, it'll tell us uh, what all resources we want to import. He's only exported scripts, so that's the only thing we can actually import. So just hit OK. So as we can see, on the left-hand side here, we have way too many scripts. This may seem overwhelming. Don't worry about it. It's not. We're not actually going to use them all. You can, and in the examples, he shows you how to, and it's really amazing. I love them all. But I'm just going to try to explain them as small as possible. This may be a long tutorial. So here we have the one folder called p3dc scripts contains everything so let's create an object and show you the basics so you have creation event here and here we go so first thing you're gonna need to do with a DLL that you would not normally do in GameMaker is p3dc init so this just initializes the DLL it just loads it into the program and tells it you know that it's there <laughs> you know, anyway, loads it into the program so that now we know now we are able to use it. So, now there are two different things that you need to do when doing a level um, collide system is you need to load in the model normally for drawing. To so say mod draw equals d3d model create. Okay. So this you've probably seen this before, so this loads in or creates a model that you can now edit. So D3D model load. Now you should know that this actually does not affect the DLL at this point. This is actually for drawing. They are quite separate. So mod draw followed by file name. So assuming I have a file in there, which I don't actually right now, because this is just for example this. <laughs> um, it'll just be mod level. Oh yeah, the D3D. Okay, so now that'll load in the model for drawing into the 3D game. So this does not load it into the into the DLL. I just want to make sure you guys know that's very separate. So now we need to actually load in that model as a collision model. So mod call equals P. 3DC, this is one of the scripts we added in there. Or er, wait. Add model. Or rather, no. First, I should. Nope, 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 nope. That happens after. There be sorry. I need to begin model first. Okay. 
begin model. Here we go. So all right, so this is similar to D3D model create, just P3DC begin model. This just uh, gives us a variable to work with here. So here we have um, some variables that's very similar to this one, except for instead of putting the, um, the mod call variable inside of here, it already knows it is because it's kind of um, like a buffer or something. Anyway, you, we have to put um, P3DC uh, end model at the end of it. So we don't actually need to stick the variable in there. We can just add as many things as we want and then end it. And it, does, it, it just knows because we've initialized it. Then everything afterwards and before the end model will load into the mod call variable. So anyway, this is perfect. So once again, we just put in the file name mod level.d3d. Okay, so now this one also does have more variables afterwards that the other one does not have, which is a position offset. So this is if you want to move the model after you've loaded it in right away. But since I'm not going to, I'm going to put it on the zero axis on all of them. Same as the uh, D3D model load. So you can't actually draw off of the mod call. It's just for collision checking and the mod draw is for drawing, obviously. So we've loaded it in into both stages here. So now I'm actually going to also make a player collide model so that you can check whether you're touching it or not. So instead of P3D add model, P3DC add model, it's going to be add block. There we go. Yeah, it's block. So this one, the variables are um, just position, really. So we have x1 minus 5, x or y1 minus 5, z1 minus 5, and then 5 for x2, y2, and z2. So this will just add a block to the hmm, player call model. And that's it. So now we have a 5 by 5 by 5, or 10 by 10 by 10 <laughs> uh, bounding box for our model. This is, again, as simple as I can possibly get it. So, yes, this is, this is, this is just very basic collision checking here. So this is how to load in your two collision checking models. So now I'm going to look at how to actually check collisions now that we have them. Okay, so I'm going to, I guess, show you the, the scripts that they use here. Um, so if we go into collision, we have P3DC collision check. This is basic. Okay, this is, this is as basic as it gets. You open any one of these up, and you will see he's got a whole bunch of notes here that pretty much explain what every script does. It's amazingly handy. So here, this one, it gives the model one ID, which in our case would be player call, and then model one X, Y, and Z. So the position of us, and then the model 2 ID, which in our case would be mod uh, call, which would be the level model, and then it's X, Y, and Z. And then it returns true if there is a collision between the two models, and false if there is not. That is all. It's the most simple type of collision checking you can possibly do, pretty much. So P3DC, um, check, really, it's quite simple. Um, okay, so we have um, first one, player call. So this is our variable that we set as a player collision model. And it's x and y and z, which will be mine x and y and z. And then level. Or no, wait, no, not level. Mod call, and then 0, 0, 0, because I'm drawing the level on the 0. So this is it. That's all you do, really. It's pr pretty easy. So after this, so it's not going to like significantly it's not going to change your movement or anything you call it after this. So like say if that um equals true then x equals x previous or something like that. Um so that you you, you get a working a physics engine working, but I'm just I'm just going to show you just the functions. Really, you you can look at his examples. I mean, he he has seven in there, and they all explain everything. So I'm just showing you the basics. These are the important bits that you should know about the P3DC check and the initializing. These are the important bits. He has an amazing 
collision system set up in his in his examples there that you can go off of but um, this is just the basics so now also I should show you P3DC check still this is slightly faster only because the model 2 ID is automatically on the 0, 0, 0 axis it doesn't move them making for much, much faster collisions because it's not moving the second, second model it doesn't have to calculate in its new positions just letting you know that so <laughs> that's kinda nice it just makes it a bit faster now this does res um, support rotations and everything it even supports uh, splitting the model which makes it faster but I'm not gonna show you that that's all in his examples I'm just gonna show you the basics so P3DC Ray this is um, pretty simple as well but still slightly more complicated and it returns more data so what it is is it allows you to check well a ray cast so it for you, you have a start position for the ray and then a direction for the ray and the model that it's gonna hit and if it does hit it it'll return the distance that it hit so it'll, it'll tell you how far away the collision is so this is a great for bullet um, checking right if you wanna check how far away the bullets gonna have to go before it hits the wall or if you want to check how far you away you are from the ground underneath you and, or how far away the wall is from in front of you it's just it gives you a lot more data so it returns the distance between you and the wall or it returns like one what is that billion million anyway returns big number if it there is no collision so we have um, the first variable would be the model ID that we're going to collide with which would be uh, of course the mod call and then it's uh, X, Y, and Z. Once again, the ray still, it would automatically assume that model X, Y, and Z is zero, making for a little bit faster, but um, for more control, just put in this one. And then the ray X origin, ray Y origin, and ray Z origin, but he didn't add that for some reason. It's Z, not Y. <laughs> anyway. And then the last ones are vector x, vector y, and vector z. So you're going to need to convert your direction and your z dir into x, y, and z uh, vectors. So you can use length dir for this, or you can look at his example, or look it up online for how to best convert your directions to vectors. It really is different depending on what you're wanting. Um, but anyway, just length dir 1 with your direction in it. It works pretty well. So, so yeah, this is this is um, collision checking at its uh, most complicated yet also simplest as I could possibly get it. So once again, the most well, really the best thing you can do is go to his website, download this pack here with all of these examples in there. That's the only download link I'm going to give you guys. Um, but anyway, his examples are truly amazing, and they've got they 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 really demonstrate the power of the DLL. So, I hope you guys have a lot of fun with that, and hopefully made sense of this, and, mm, yeah, can figure out how to use it, because that would be nice. Because, yeah, it's truly a powerful DLL. Anyway, see you guys later. Goodbye.